Get ready to rock radio. And uh, we started off this sequence with the title track from the brand new Foreigner album, and that's Can't Slow Down. And we say hello, uh, a very big hello, and great to talk to the band's Mick Jones. Hello to Mick. Hey, how you doing? Oh, it's nice to talk to you, Mick. And uh, would you say that's um, semi-autobiographical? You can't slow down. I mean, uh, (laughs) you've just released the new album, and it's very appropriate, really, isn't it? Well, it is. um uh, it was partly uh, inspired by um, uh, getting together with the, the American racing um, circuit, the NASCAR circuit. We're doing a lot of shows with them uh, this year. And we went to a few races uh, earlier last year. And, um, you know, we picked up the, the sort of the spirit of things. And, uh, and somehow that title just popped up. And I thought, well, that's pretty appropriate for where we're at. And... Uh, so uh, we went with that uh, title, um, and it re- in, indeed it does reflect uh, the fact that uh, I've sped up more than anything in the last few years. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's no no end in sight at the moment. Well, this is good. This is good for the fans as well. Now, in recent years, there seem to be a load of like um, foreigner reissues in terms of like best of collections, uh, not least last year's collection, uh, No End in Sight, which again is very appropriate title, really. Um, and there was, of course, a sneak preview of, it, of the track Too Late, which we'll play in a minute. But uh, are you relieved as, um, as anyone, and, and most of all the fans, Mick, that you've now some new product out there? Yes, I, I really am. Um, this has been a long time in, in coming. Obviously, our last album was released, uh, it must be 15 years ago. You know, after that, through the end of the 90s, the early 2000s, I, I had often tried to uh, get together and write some new material with uh, with Lou Graham, the um, uh, our ex uh, lead singer and an ex partner indeed for me. Um, but it seemed somehow like the chemistry had gone, and then finally that period ended up with Lou uh, leaving the band and pursuing his own thing. And um, uh, hence, you know, that time of, uh, of of no productivity basically from the band. Um, but when I put this new version of Foreigner together, uh, I, you know, it was something that I really had to feel motivated about, and, um, and uh, I, you know, gradually the band sort of formed, one or two people came and left, and, and finally we got to the position where the band was really uh, clicking, and um, certainly we had, uh, we've, we've sort of spent the last three or four years paying our dues again, in a way, bringing the um, band back into the uh, public eye, and uh, finally I felt uh, it was the time, it was inspiring me enough to think about really doing a new, a new album, and um, you know, obviously embarking on a new album at this point is the expectation and the, you know, living up to, to the past, you know, all those things are kind of there. Those fears are there in a way, but um, I think just the power of the chemistry in the band, uh, the ability of, the, of our, our uh, relatively new lead singer Kelly Hansen, um, uh, sort of motivated me and drove me to uh, really to take a shot and uh, and, go, and go for a new album. You, you sort of answered one of my questions there about, uh, or one of my uh, questions to follow really about. Uh, why has it taken so long? Because um, you have done gigs, haven't you, in the last few years? Not least, um, you, you played Sweden Rock this year. Yes. And I think um, you, you did touch upon that, that you've almost like gigged the new lineup before the album, haven't you, really? Well, that's really what it's, it's been about. Um, you know, we've, we've pretty much played uh, around the world. We've, obviously, we've done the, uh, a, a, quite a number of shows in America. And um, last year, we, uh, or earlier this year, we decided to you know, um, jack it up a bit in, in Europe and, and uh, indeed remind people that, uh, or introduce them to the fact that the band is uh, rolling again. And um, I think that that's, that's really has been valuable for us because um, it's almost like paying, paying dues all over again. <laughs> it's um, for a lot of people who thought we had a, an overnight uh, success, you know, in the 70s, um, We've, uh, I've certainly put the time in this time, and uh, uh, it's been a lot of fun because it's brought the band really uh, together, and um, it, it, I think that's had an effect on, on how the, the album has turned out, definitely. Uh. Get ready to rock radio. 
Now, what's guided the new recordings? I mean, did you feel, you know, more or less duty bound to come up with something in what I might term the classic sort of foreigner mould, or, or did you feel you had more of a free reign, or was it a compromise really? How, how did that pan out for you? Well, you know, all those questions sort of went through my mind at, at um, you know, just before we really started to put the uh, songs together. Um, but I, at the end of the day, I thought, well, it's pointless trying to, um, you know, strive to recreate, uh, you know, the past. That's there and that's done, and I'm very proud of it. Um, but uh, it really, I, I just decided to just let it flow and uh, get into the studio. And um, I, I worked on the songs with uh, our co-producer Marty Fredrickson, and and with uh, and then introduced uh, Kelly uh, Kelly Hansen into the process and gave him a real um, you know participation in it, so that he would. Uh, be able to get a real feeling into the songs as well. So, and, I, and it just really flowed naturally. There was no, you know, parameters, no sort of oh, would this sound like this kind of thing. Or, um, I just wanted it to sound, you know, to obviously to have the 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 identity of Foreigner, um, which I think is largely to do with the melodic side and the vocal performances and the um, the crafting of the songs. Uh, but that's just. Um, that's sort of ingrained in me, I suppose, after all these years. Uh, and, um, you know, indeed, people's reaction has been that, boy, this album could just have slotted into the sequence of any of the old albums. But, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of happy about that because I, I wanted to um, maintain or, you know, or, or regain the integrity that I felt we'd sort of uh, lost a bit towards the end of the 90s and and through that whole period uh, before the breakup with Lou. So um, in as much as, uh, you know, um, as the content of the album goes, it, it's really pretty spontaneous, and I kind of let all the expectations uh, just sit in the background and say, well, let's just get on with it. And That's really it. interesting. I mean, I think, you know, probably the timing mix very good at the moment because there does seem to be a revival in um, 80s, 90s, uh, maybe 80s really, melodic rock music and uh, certainly Foreigner have influenced so many bands and uh, not least the vocalists. But I mean, you, you obviously, you've mentioned there that you're really proud of the band's legacy. Yes. And, um, you know, you, you obviously approach each gig. You must It must be wonderful playing those tunes because they are all... You know, it's like the journey, what do they call them, the Dirty Dozen. I mean, it's very similar, isn't it, really? Well, yeah, it's, um, and somehow they, they they have been able to stand that, the test of time. They they um, I still have a lot of fun playing the song. They, you know, the the energy in the in the new lineup is um, it's really powerful and 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 I must say, uh, you know, now we're having fun on stage. Um, and it's a, it's, that was something that I was missing for a, a good ten years, and um, just going through the motions a bit. Um, but now I've really rediscovered. I don't know. I just um, with you know with the appreciation from the fans about all that, so the heritage of the band. Um, um, I, I really feel quite proud playing those songs mm. uh, these days, and the reaction of uh, there's a lot of you know younger people coming to the shows these days, and. Uh, as you say, there seems to be a, a fascination about that time, uh, late 70s um, through the 80s. That's and, right, yeah. So, it, you know, I look out there some nights and this, you know, half of the audience is like teenage kids and I'm thinking, what, well, what year is this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's very strange, well, but quite heartening, isn't it, really? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Get ready to rock radio. Now, it could be said that if we rewind the clock to the late 80s, that the, the beginning of the end for the sort of classic foreigner lineup was when Lou Graham, the singer, left the band in around about 1989. Now, are, are you aware yourself, Mick, of any pressures being put on his new band? Because I think he went off to form Shadow King, and, and that's an album I really enjoy listening to in, in uh, 1991. But I think that was also being promoted by the same label, and it sort of clashed with the release of Unusual Heat in um, in the early 1990s. But were you aware of any sort of like rivalry at that time, or you know, um, did you just get on with things really? Well, um, 
it was it was quite um you know when when Lou released his first album um I guess it was supposed to be you know a, a lead singer making his own album and I thought that was good that give Lou the space to do his thing to express his um ideas more um but the fact is it became more than that and um sort of ended up being almost uh, a challenge to to foreigner you know and as as an entity and um that sort of became kind of divisive uh, over those next few years and um you know there wasn't really that much that um I could do about it Lou was almost trying to sort of um uh I guess I could go as far as sort of in a in a weird way sabotage the band and um uh I felt um you know I was in a bit of a tough spot at that point because he was somebody that I'd basically plucked from oblivion and um worked with over that previous 10 years to to really establish him um uh work with him very closely on his vocals and help him to develop a style you know that was really the the um the part of the identity of foreigner mm. and i was getting word back from his uh camp that um oh all this stuff sounds uh, a lot stronger than foreigner and it's much more you know this and that and and it just became uncomfortable after all it must have hurt that actually for you you know it, yeah it actually did yeah it was, um, mm. You know, we had something really good. Uh we had a, a good chemistry as far as writing. We we had our personal differences, but nothing nothing that was um you know uh, out of the ordinary really. But um from that point, you know, things just sort of started to uh disintegrate a bit. And and then eventually we did get back together, but um I think there were some you know, some wounds that just didn't heal properly. Mm. And uh I I think as a result of it um both of us suffered in that um you know early part of the 90s and uh, definitely the band suffered uh as uh, as a whole and um it was almost part of your hiatus really in the last 15 years isn't it you know before yeah. you got yourself back together with a, a new lineup yeah very often thought about you know just closing it down but uh somehow you know it kept me <laughs> i couldn't quite uh, disentangle myself from it and um you know a lot of there was a lot of pride uh, wrapped up in in what we'd achieved and you know originally my vision for the band um was still even through the toughest times it was still kind of hanging in there you know mm. um and it and it as i say it took a, a long time we were we were just sort of going through the motions at the end and and hence the period of inactivity i think lou and i had had sort of lost that um magic that we seemed to have uh, had in the earlier days and and we just weren't really inspiring each other enough to come out with a uh, new product no now was there ever any talk then in the sort of towards the back end of the 90s into um you know early 2000 because i know he left ag- he came back and then he left again didn't he and then of course he had this very serious illness um but was there any talk um that you know he would get back together or was that really not an option at that stage well we had finished um uh, we had um done a like a six week tour of europe just prior to going back to the states and uh, this is in 2002 I guess and um the next thing I hear is that Lou's out on the road and uh with his own band um and I believe part of that was uh fulfilling um uh, his his parents wishes who his parents had passed on uh, you know shortly before that you know without any um you know we 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 didn't talk about this or anything it just sort of decided to up and do that so really um i was kind of left sort of stranded again as well at that point mm. and um uh i took a couple of years off myself to to reflect uh on what i was doing um and virtually you know things came to a standstill and i took that time to really reflect and figure out you know what my feelings were and how how i felt about 
perhaps continuing on with the band um, and a lot of uh, soul searching. Get ready to rock radio. Um, it was really um, meeting uh, meeting up with Jason Bonham that um, started the whole thing moving in the early stages. And uh, you know, Jason I'd known for many years and. Uh, he was a huge fan of the band and um you know he said to me well you know there's a lot of people out there man that want to really hear this stuff and you know he was full of enthusiasm and kind of egged me on a bit and uh, we ended up um you know just jamming and bringing people in and then uh, we played a few foreigner songs they sounded great <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and that was the sort of uh, the thing that sort of set things going again and then it was really a question of uh, I, I would have never have proceeded if I hadn't really been able to find the, the right voice and um, you know eventually after a lot of searching through uh, through demo tapes and um, uh, not demo tapes demo CDs <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and searching you know England uh, the States even Australia and uh, eventually there was Kerry Hansen sitting in a in uh, in Los Angeles, and um, you know we we had um, some stuff he'd done, and uh, he did a couple of uh, covers of our songs, and uh, I I listened to that, and I and immediately I heard the uh, there was something in his voice, the the timbre in his voice, the uh, the, uh, the the soulful kind of quality he had, and I thought, well, this. This, this sounds like the guy to me, and um, indeed he's turned out to be that, uh, you know, that voice. You know, it really, really inspired me to write, and because um, I've always written with, uh, you know, obviously with the vocalist in mind, and I think that's what brought the spark back a bit. Get ready to rock radio. It sounds great, actually. You've had a bit of egging on from Jason Bonham, and you found the vocalist that is totally suitable and. Uh, you know, it must provide a new, renewed enthusiasm, uh, and especially with you doing the gigs as well, you saw the reaction. So um, it's almost like you need all those pieces of the jigsaw in place, don't you, before you can go forward, really? Yeah, it's, um, I, you know, as far as the integrity of, of, of the band and, and keeping up the standard, I mean, we had, uh, we, as you mentioned earlier, we had done an album, Unusual Heat, with a, a, another vocalist, Johnny Edwards. Um, to me, that was sort of. I enjoyed making that album. It was a diversion. It was. It went in a bit of a more bluesy kind of um, kind of direction. Uh, but this time, you know, especially at this point in in my career, I felt um, I really, if I was going to, you know, go out and represent what Foreigner really is, uh, that it that it had to be uh, a certain level of. of it's definitely a certain level of quality about the whole band. The the vocals obviously were were a very important part of that, you know. So all those things, and then then we went out on the road and really thoroughly kind of worked this band, broke it in as it were, and um, you know the reaction has been fantastic. I must say, people have gotten over the fact that there is a new singer and um, have really accepted Kelly as the uh, the you know, that's the real deal. I mean, it's, it's, I can't, you know, I'm not saying that uh, we're, we're trying to emulate Lou or whatever. I think the, the, it's the way the songs are written. I think it's, it's, it's been most of the, uh, of, of the deal here. You know, it's, um, I think I have a certain writing style, I suppose, that really is, was at the forefront of the early albums and um, it's really what established the, uh, the direction of the band, so um, uh, and that that sort of remains, doesn't it? I can see what you, you're saying, uh, really. Yeah. If you, if you listen to the album, I think a lot of the reaction we're getting is that, wow, you know, this is this is sort of the, the next foreigner album we were expecting. Yes, I'm hoping for really. Hoping yeah. For, yeah. But but it, Mick, it must be. Um, a very difficult job for I mean it's a difficult job to sort of rejuvenate a band like this but also f from the vocalist point of view with Lou Graham's vocals being a distinctive part of the original sound and as you say he does bring it off Kelly Hansen 
But, you know, it's all that expectation, isn't it, from the audience that, um, you know, they're listening closely to these songs. And uh, I think when people watch the DVD part of the new release, they'll realise that um, he's done it. You all do it, don't you? Well, he's... Um... You know, you capture the whole thing, really, the, the whole spirit of the earlier band as well. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think the main thing is the enthusiasm is renewed, you know, uh... And you can really tell that the band is actually having a good time on stage. You know, it's not, um, you know, the chemistry is really good both on and off, as I as I said, uh, mm. on and off stage, and that makes a huge difference to me. Um, you know, I I really look forward to those two hours every night. That's the highlight of my day. I mean, we could say in the late '90s it was the Thing that I feared. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but now it really has come the full circle, and um, I think you can tell by the, uh, as you say in the DVD, we're having fun up there. Get ready to rock radio. Now, now when you formed the band back in the late 70s, 1976, I mean, it, it on paper it looked a quite unusual combination because it was like an Anglo-American partnership, but um, you had the. Uh, Strangely, Ian McDonald, the sax player with uh, King Crimson, H- how did the band come about originally? You know, h- how did it form? I know you then recruited Lou Graham and it, it went on from there, but um, I should tell listeners that you come from like, I mean, you go back to the 60s, and perhaps we'll t- touch briefly on that, Mick, but um, through the 60s, then you got involved with Spooky Tooth, but it seems such a big leap to uh, um, like a stadium rock band, really. I mean, what was going on at that time in your life, and were there, were there any suggestions being made, or was this a, a, a purely organic thing on your part? Oh no, it was it was definitely organic. Um, yes. You know, people sort of at the time, you know, with the with the dawn of punk and a new wave, you know, <laughs> referring to us as a corporate rock band uh, that had been, you know, um, invented in the boardroom of Atlantic Records or something <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous, really. No, I had, um, you know, I, I had arrived in New York. I'd been there for a couple of years. I was sort of surviving, basically. Uh, Spooky Tooth had broken up. I joined the band with Leslie West the, uh, of Mountain. And um, I was just trying to survive, and I really got down to that point where I had to decide whether this, whether I could actually um, make a go of it over here. And just in a very... Um, you know, in a very simple way, I, I had met Ian McDonald. Um, uh, we we had become very friendly, and we started. Uh, and, and I had this idea for. I, I had started writing songs, and I and um, I quite honestly didn't know what to do with them. And the only logical thing to do was maybe to form a band and see what they sounded like. And uh, that's basically how it came together. And then from there, we just. Um, just the auditions after auditions to find some kind of a, of, of a chemistry, and um, and gradually it came together. And uh, Lou basically was the last addition to the band, and then that took searching. Um, you know, I must have heard about 60, 70 different voices. You know, before I just rediscovered Lou. And, um, you know, from there. To, the, to recording the first album and then the release of the album, it was. I mean, I had modest um, expectations that we would be able to make a little. Um, you know, we we would be able to sort of gain a little success and start building the band. And suddenly, you know, we're up there in the stratosphere with unheard of uh, record sales, and um, the rest was sort of crazy ride for those first few years. Mm. It must be incredible, though, for, for for somebody like yourself, Mick, who, you know, grew up in the uh, the, the 60s and, and beyond that, um, you mentioned Spooky Tooth. I mean, you know, to, to go from probably quite a humble existence in the 60s to, to mega stardom and, you know, the sort of the, the true rock lifestyle, really. Um, I mean, do you ever hanker for the early days at all? Is there anything in those early years when you started out playing music that you miss? Well, there's the naivety, I suppose, of, yeah. of, of, of all that when it's the first time it happens to you. Um, these days, uh, I, I must say, this is the first time that I've felt really renewed uh, in, in 
spirit. You know, I, I'm kind of, I'm proud again of, of, of what I'm doing up there on stage and what we're putting together, the stuff that we're coming up with now. Um, I, you know, it's, I just look at it as, as, as really being very fortunate to be able to, um, to, to be doing this still. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I, I never figured I'd be playing guitar past 30, you know. <laughs> then that would be the time to get a, a real job, you know. So I'm, I'm just fortunate to have been able to follow my, uh, my original passion and, um, and keep that flame burning and uh, indeed now um, feel that it's sort of, you know, I, I'm very, very happy at where I am at the moment. Well, long may it continue, uh, Mick. You know, it's really great this to see someone like yourself. You know, when you say you really enjoy, well, I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't do it if you weren't enjoying it, but... Um, no, <laughs> no, I, I know. And um, to, just to, to conclude, really, just to ask you, I mean, we can't really um, conclude or we can't miss out the fact that you've um, written or co-written um, nearly all of the Foreigner output, a, a marvellous achievement. Um, we're going to play out, actually, with a, a remix track off the new CD DVD set, which is Urgent. Now, you've re you, you wrote this song. Um, can you tell us... How that came about, Urgent, it is a classic rock track and one that gets played constantly on, uh, you know, rock radio. He just came out with um, uh, the producer that was, we were working with on that album, uh, Mutt Lang. Um, really, he demanded of me to come and listen to all my tapes, all everything I'd written, bits and pieces, all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. I had never really bared my soul that way before to anybody. And... Um, uh, there was this little weird little guitar thing that I had, which has ended up becoming the the signature to the to the song. Oh. And he heard uh, this little snippet and he said, "That's great." And I had sort of uh, I'd imagined it might be some sort of weird instrumental thing, but uh, anyway, it ended up um, we you know we we took the basis of that little guitar figure in the beginning and and worked it up into um, kind of an odd song. It's kind of uh, it was branching out a bit. It, was, you know, it had sort of a funky feel to it, even a soul type of uh, underlying um, feel to it. And uh, then eventually, you know, with the addition of um, uh, Junior Walker on sax, which was one of my one of the great moments for me in my career, working with him, uh, developed what it to become a, uh, a classic, one of the classic sax solos in rock, I think. It is, definitely. Well, let's hear it now. We'll say uh, all the very best with this album, and uh, thank you very much indeed, Mick Jones, for talking to Get Ready to Rock. Well, thanks, David. It's been a pleasure.